to Professor Kobayashi and Professor Fernandez Miranda for giving me such a wonderful opportunity. I studied microsurgical anatomy under Professor Broughton in 2013 to 14, and after coming back to Tokyo, I am now working under Professor Kono in a member of Scalvis team. When Professor Broughton talked about the posterior fossa anatomy, he always started his talk with this rule of three. When we look back the earlier time of the lab at University of Florida around 1980, we can see he wrote these articles based on this rule of three. All these, all these important anatomical structures in the posterior fossa can be divided into these three complexes. And this rule can greatly help young neurosurgeons to understand posterior fossa anatomy. This rule can also help understanding of anatomy and surgery for three vascular compression syndrome. But this topic will be talked in the next lecture. The brainstem is composed of three parts, midbrain, pons, and medullar, and the cerebellum has three surfaces, tentorial, petrosal, and suboxital surfaces. Between these three brainstems and three cerebral surfaces, three cerebral brainstem fissures, the, big, the biggest fissures in the posterior fossa are located. The cerebral mesencephalic fissure is between the midbrain and tentorial surface. The cerebral pontine fissure between the pons and, and the petrosal surface. And the cerebral medullary fissure between the medullar and suboxital surface. When you look into the fiber connection between the cerebellum and the brainstem, the cerebellum is connected with the brainstem by the three cerebral peduncles, superior, middle, and inferior cerebral peduncles. You can, you can find superior peduncle in the cerebral mesencephalic fissure, middle peduncle in the cerebral pontine fissure, and the inferior peduncle in the cerebral medullary fissure. About the cerebral arteries, the STA runs around the midbrain, while passing beside third, fourth, and fifth cranial nerves, and of course is in the cerebral mesencephalic fissure to reach the tentorial surface. The, the ICA runs around the pons, passes beside the sixth, and makes the meta loop around seven and eighth, and of course is along the cerebral pontine fissure to reach the petrosal surface. Rarely, the ICA embedded in the dular or bone around the subarcuate fossa, through which the subarcuate artery enters the bone. If the ICA embedded only in the dura, you only need to dissect the dular. But when the ICA embedded deep in the bone, you need bone drilling. In this acoustic tumor surgery, in a park bench position, in the retrosigmoid approach, the ICA embedded in the dular to block the surgical trajectory. So we, so we dissected the petrous dular around the embedded point and cut the subarcuate artery to mobilize the ICA and expose the tumor. After opening the acoustic meatus, we localized the facial nerve by neuromonitoring and dissected the tumor from the facial nerve to, to achieve a complete resection. After finishing tumor resection, you can see mobilized the ICA and the preserve the facial nerve. In the another case with the acoustic tumor, the ICA embedded not only in the dula, but also into the bone. So we drilled the bone around the ICA and dissected the ICA to mobilize it to expose the tumor. The pica runs around medulla passes between the lower cranial nerves and gets into the cerebral medullary fissure to reach the, to the suboxital surface. In some cases, the pica bifurcates from the vertebral artery extracranially. 
The OA pike bypass is usually performed in the caudal loop of P3 segment. But if the caudal loop is inconvenient as the recipient, you can use other segments as an alternative recipient. The posterior fossa veins are also composed of the three groups, colonic, petrosal, and tentorial groups. The superior petrosal vein, the biggest vein in the cerebrofontaine angle is a major branch of the petrosal group, but it also has connection to the galenic and tentorial loop in usual. As like the sylvian fissure in the supratentorial surgery, fissures are the biggest gateway for neurosurgeons to access deeply treated lesions without dividing any neural structures. In the infratentorial surgery, the biggest features are the three cerebral brainstem features. The cerebral mesenseric fissure extends caudally between the midbrain and, and the cerebellum and opens cranially into the quadriginal cistern. During variations of the supracerebellar infratentorial approach or occipital transtentorial approach, Opening this fissure helps to minimize the need for cerebral retraction and reducing the tension on surrounding vascular structures. When you open the entire fissure and divide the superior medullary villum, you can access it to the upper force ventricle. The superior and the inferior limb of the cerebral pontine fissure and the petrosal and postcribal fissures meet at the suprafrontal cistern, an optim optimal site to open the rock node to drain the CSF and identify the vein of the cerebral fissure, the major branch of petrosal. In the retrosigmoid approach, opening the rock node along the superior limb of the cerebral fissure provides wide access to the middle cerebral peduncle and the trigeminal node and op opening the inferior limb of the cerebral pontine fissure allows the elevation of the floatius and the choroid plexus to expose the root exit zone of the facial nerve, the posterior surface of the inferior cerebral peduncle, and the pontomedullary sulcus deep to the nerves. For such cavernoma at pontomedullary junction, we have preferred to use the perifacial zone through the pontomedullary junction via the infrafrocular approach. In a sitting position, you can see lower 7 and 8 and 5th cranial nerve, superior petrosal vein, and dissected the floculus and the choroid plexus to elevate them and coagulate the choroid plexus to shrink it. And after localizing the facial nerve, in this case, between the root roots of 10th and 11th cranial nerves, we found the vein of pontomedullary junction, this tiny vein along the pontomedullary sulcus. And we entered into the pons and found the cavernoma and resected it in a piecemeal fashion to achieve complete resection. Since the tonsil is attached only at superlateral margin as tonsil peduncle, the cerebral medullary fissure is the biggest fissure in the posterior fossa. We classify this wider space as medial tonsil space, uvular tonsil space, and the supratonsil space. The vein of the inferior cerebral peduncle coursing up along the tenure is a good landmark to incise the tiller along the tenure when opening the first ventricle. The vein of the cerebral medullary fissure coursing near the telovelar junction is a good landmark for determining how far the fissure has been opened when a large tumor occupied this space. This is another cavernoma case in a prone position. We lifted up the tonsil and cut the tenure cut the tail along the tenure to get the wider space out in the force ventricle. And here is the lateral recess. After localizing the facial nucleus, 
we reach the hematoma and the carcinoma and then reject it. Intergeo drilling of the temporal bone facing the cerebral container angle is another technique to extend the surgical feed in the cerebral container angle. But vital structures inside the temporal bone, such as semicircular canals and an internal carotid artery, should be preserved during the drilling. Based on the rule of three, you can find the supramedial extension in upper complex, transmedial extension in middle complex, and the superjugular extension in the lower complex. The supramedial extension by removing the supramedial tubercle enables access the Meckel's cave and the parasitic regions. The transmedial extension, removing the posterior wall of the internal acoustic meatus, provides reach inside the acoustic meatus. You can see each of the four nerves with the nervous intermedius, and here is the transverse crest. By the super jugular extension, during this roof of the jugular foramen, you can access the jugular the upper jugular foramen from the cerebral pontine angle. This was my first project with Professor Rotten, and he taught me how to do the research work from the basics. This is a meningioma extending into the upper jugular foramen and acoustic meatus. In the park bench position, we dissected the uh, seven and eight cranial nerve from caudal, cranial side and lower from the caudal side and dissected the dura around the acoustic meatus and jugular foramen and drilled the temporal one to open the acoustic meatus and jugular foramen. After resecting the intramedial tumor, we opened the jugular foramen and dissected the intrajugular tumor. Now you can see the you know, gross pharyngeal nerve inside the jugular foramen. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. That was a wonderful presentation, uh, Ken, as always. Um, very much appreciated, beautiful exposition of anatomy and how to apply that into uh, surgery. Uh, really nice. Thank you very um, much, John. So, uh, Professor Matusima Sr., I believe it's your turn, so please go ahead and share your screen. Okay.